When I was a block away from the house, I saw Paul's car in the drive. Paul? I ran towards the house. Oh, thank God. Everything was going to be okay now, I told myself. Paul is home. He was sitting at the kitchen table, Diane. his face serious. Diane, get up. I needed him to hold me. Oh, Paul, Paul. Any sane, half-thinking, half-aware woman would have known right then and there what was going on. But by this time, I was so far past sane. Diane, just get up and sit down. I'm so glad you're home. Could you work from home today, please? Diane, I want a divorce. And boom, there it was. I didn't even get a, Diane, we need to talk. No preamble, just boom, bang, straight to the D word. My heart dropped into my stomach, and I became suddenly aware of my knees, like they might give out at any moment unless I concentrated on them. Come on, you must have known. I've been distant for a while. You always said you were just busy with work. Oh, come work. on, Diane. You knew something wasn't right. Even he had become bored with my unlimited capacity for denial. Me and Yolanda, we're in love. The word floated in the air above my head. Love. I'd never even met Yolanda. She was just a word written in a delicate, flowery cursive. She still is. It just happened. I don't know, we didn't want it to happen. We both tried to ignore it, but I've never felt like this before. Look, I did love you. Or at least I thought I did. But now I can see that, I don't know, I think I just wanted to be in love. I think we both did. Say something. Please. But I'd lost the ability to speak. It felt like if I did speak... His words would shoot down all my words like stealth bombers. Yolanda and I, we, we both want the same things, you know? We just click, and you and I, we never really... Look, I, I think we're just at different stages in our lives. All I could think of at that moment was the time he had written both our names in the sand at Pebble Beach. Four years ago, just before we got married. For some reason, this seemed really important to me. So, are you writing her name in the sand now? Before he left, he said I could have the house, that all he wanted was the cat. Which didn't surprise me. Bungo was always his cat. In fact, the cat probably knew the whole time. All our friends, too. I was probably the only one who didn't know that our marriage was over. The sound of him leaving was deafening. Goodbye, Diane. Unbearable. Was he right? Did I know that this was coming and I just ignored all the signs? Is that why I've started to hear the voice? Then the music was back. Okay, I get it now, all this... I finally see! My unconscious brain had known for weeks that my marriage to Paul was over, and it had been trying to tell my conscious brain, and the pressure built up, and... Poof. Something resembling a psychotic break. Then again, maybe it wasn't a psychotic break. Maybe an angel was speaking to me, trying to help me through all this. I just needed to love myself more, unconditionally. Accept myself. Accept my reality. Christine was right. The only way out was through. I had to put Roberto back on the wall and let him in. Come out here, you. Diane, my love. He had some coffee grounds on him, but otherwise the poster was intact. You've come back to me. So, you finally I told you, yes? He is not the man of this Paul. I put the poster on the wall. I am the man for you, my beloved. Knelt before it in prayer. I can make you happy. And closed my eyes. Let me make you happy. I invited him in. I see you, Roberto. I hear you. And I accept your love. Oh, yeah. I was going for it. Whole hog. And as I said those words, I saw my heart, bright red, pulsing. I embraced the world. I imagined myself as a bird flying across the sea, then over mountains. I saw cities far below. Then, through the mist, appeared the Tuscan skies, just like in the travel poster. I saw the vineyard, the villa, Roberto's balcony. Tell me you love me. I love you, Roberto. Tell me that you are mine. I am yours. I am yours.
And that, my friends, was the sound of... I don't know what that was the sound of. All I know is that suddenly I was in a different place. I opened my eyes, slowly. I saw a wooden floor bathed in a warm yellow light. I looked up. It was a large room facing a balcony. Rolling green hills and a blue sky stretched beyond... I knew right away where I was. Diane. I turned and there he was, arms opened wide. He was shorter than I imagined, but oh, he was handsome. Roberto. He took me in his arms and just held me. I got to you, Diane. I got to you. And let me cry. Oh, yes. I was really there in Tuscany at Roberto's villa on his balcony overlooking a vineyard. It's true. How did it work? Who the hell knows? I didn't care. Neither did Roberto. He just said he's been watching me from his balcony window for weeks. I just turned up in his binoculars one day. What more did I need to know? After a few days of lounging around the villa, making passionate love, Roberto took me on a tour of the vineyard and the nearby town. We came home to more passionate lovemaking and a home-cooked meal by his housekeeper, Maria, who, I should mention, does all the cleaning. For the first time in years, I had no compulsion to vacuum. After a week, it occurred to me, if Roberto was able to watch me from his balcony, could I somehow stand on the balcony and see into my old life, my old house? So, one morning, while Roberto was asleep, I went to the balcony, opened the door, and stepped outside. The binoculars were on the deck chair. I picked them up and looked, but all I could see was the Tuscan sky and faraway fields. How did these work? Then I noticed a dial on the right side. I twisted it, and slowly, slowly, the inside of my house came into view. I saw my living room, the couch, the bookshelf. Then, on a whim, I called his name. Paul? Paul, are you there? It's me, Diane. He ran into the living room. He looked confused, and yes, this gave me an odd rush of pleasure. I felt powerful. Where are you? I'm in Tuscany, Paul. I finally got there, without you. He was running around the living room, looking everywhere. When he opened the closet under the stairs, I couldn't help but laugh. No, I'm not in the closet. I'm in Tuscany. Look at the travel poster on the wall. No, seriously, go closer. Really close. That's right. See the villa? If you look really close, you can see me waving. Hi, Paul. I hope you and Yolanda will be very happy together, because I don't need you anymore. Poor Paul. He was white as a sheet. That's right. I found new love and I'm living the dream in Tuscany. You can have the stinking house. Bye. I put the binoculars down and strolled triumphantly back into the house. I mean, villa. I had a sudden urge to vacuum, but fought it. Then I had a sudden urge to call Christine and ask her what to do. I fought that, too. What was wrong with me? I was living the dream, right? By the end of the week, I was back to my old ways and cleaning again. Despite Maria's protestations that cleaning was her territory and she wasn't going to let some young upstart steal her job. And as for Roberto, it turns out he had a bad binocular habit. I came home from the market one day and found him on the balcony, binoculars in hand. An old phonograph that my great-grandmother might have owned was on a portable table beside him, accordion music blasting out over the countryside. I thought he might be keeping an eye on his vineyard, but I was wrong. Margaret, my love, I see you. I see your desire. I see your soul. I know I could have ran over there, ripped the binoculars out of his hand and confronted him. But instead I just laughed. (laughs) I see you're keeping busy. Diane, you're home. Oh yes, my love. I'm finally home. I put my bags from the market on the table and went outside into the garden. All this fresh Tuscany air must be really good for my soul because, despite just finding out my new love was a hopeless philanderer, my heart felt light, free. I looked at my beautiful garden with its rows of vegetables, its flowers, and just breathed it in. Maria was there, picking herbs. She saw me and quickly turned away. 
I'm sure she thinks I'm a fool to have fallen for Roberto's drivel. Diane, please, let me explain. There's no need to explain, Roberto. It's all right, really. But you are special, Diane. You are beautiful. And you're so unhappy. Seriously, Roberto, forget it. I don't care. In fact, invite all your unhappy, lonely women to come live here. The more, the merrier. We can start a club. Diane, such a cynicism is very uh, unbecoming. From then on, our relationship was pretty much over. Roberto began to spend most of the day working in the vineyard, and in the evenings, he went to the tavern. I rarely see him these days. I think he's avoiding me. I called Christine. I could tell she was disappointed Roberto turned out to be just a man and not an angel after all. She says that the Tuscany poster must contain some sort of black magic, or the binoculars. Maria says they belong to her great-grandfather, who was a practicing alchemist, and was excommunicated from the church for turning a squash into a tomato. If Roberto doesn't get me a plane ticket back to Canada, I may just stay here. I've taken up a new hobby that is turning out to be very lucrative. Maria is teaching me how to use a loom. I've been making shawls, lace tablecloths. The tourists in the market snatch up anything handwoven. Of course, I let Maria sell mine for me. That woman really knows how to haggle. And my garden. I spend hours here reading, or just watching the birds. Maria is teaching me how to work the soil, how to plant, when to harvest. And sure, she has her dark side. Sometimes she calls me thick as a brick, but then I tell her she's an ornery old woman with a bad temper. Then we both have a good laugh. Roberto doesn't know that we know he's still talking to all his binocular lady friends. It's our little secret. We have a good laugh about that, too.